Like a deer in headlights, nothing stops a kid or a collector dead stop like a certain action feature put into toys. And that action feature is glow-in-the-dark. Okay, well, it's not as much an action feature as it is a chemical that's put into the plastic that creates glowing, but it does stop most people in their tracks because we're not expecting things to glow. Well, of course, unless it says, you know, glow-in-the-dark on the packaging. But the added effect of having a toy and finding out that when the lights go out, that toy gets brighter than it was before the lights were out, well, that is an awesome feeling. And it's why glow-in-the-dark toys have been popular with kids for decades. Their application in the toy industry is almost endless. They've been used in activity toys, they've been used in board games, they're even used in fidget toys now. You'll see them show up in licensed product and homegrown items. Things like Hot Wheels will have glow-in-the-dark tracks, or glow-in-the-dark accessories will be added to licensed action figures to give them that extra cool feature. There's even entire science sets and make-your-own kits letting kids create things that glow in the dark and empowering them to really have an ownership over the glow-in-the-dark property. And let's not forget how much clever brand managers love when they can take an existing tool and give it a glow-in-the-dark version because tooling is really expensive. And no, it's not just toys I work on. There's lots of companies that do this, and it's a really clever move because tooling costs about $100,000 for an original action figure. And if you can re-release that figure, either in glow-in-the-dark or with glow-in-the-dark parts, well, you've now done what's called maximizing the tool, because the tool is a one-time investment. And if you can release it over and over again and find new and clever, call it decos, to release that same exact tool or mold, well, you're now maximizing that investment. And that's why you see so many figures show up as special editions or Comic-Con editions, as a glow-in-the-dark feature on an existing toy that's already been put out. The glow-in-the-dark is looked at as sort of an ooh-ah added feature, but really from a spreadsheet, from a P&L point of view, it's just about taking an existing tool and finding a way to re-release it in a new color. And glow-in-the-dark tends to be a color that is accepted by both kids and collectors as legitimate. As opposed to, say, if you put He-Man out in, you know, all purple or, you know, Disco Skeletor. Go YouTube that. So, Glow-in-the-Dark can plus up toys. It can also be a great way to have variants. Funko does this a lot. I've done this when I was at Mattel on DC Universe Classics with the uh, Spectre figure. Not to be confused with Mighty Spectre or this channel Spectre, but, you know, the DC Spectre character. Who had a version that was the same tool, but in Glow-in-the-Dark. So you've now double used that tool, and you've amortized the investment over multiple skews. Glow in the Dark has also been used, as I noted in the beginning, as an action feature. Most notably, probably with Scareglow from Masters of the Universe. He was done back in the 1986-1987 line, and noting his foreign name is Spectror, like, not Spector, but Spectror, yes, double R there. Well, right on packaging, it was called out that he glowed in the dark. And this is carried forward to modern releases, such as the Origins line and the uh, Masters of the Universe Classics line, where the glow-in-the-dark has really been considered the action feature of this character, as opposed to Snout Spout, who spits water, or Trapjaw, who has interchangeable arm pieces. And glow-in-the-dark has basically become synonymous with the DNA of who Scare Glow is. And every figure, well except for when figures are released without glow-in-the-dark, or at least with limited glow-in-the-dark, but he's supposed to be a fully glow-in-the-dark figure. And when he is, he looks awesome. And that's one of the reasons that Scareglow is honestly one of the most popular He-Man characters. Heck, just look at the director's commentary playlist on this channel and look at how many views his video has over even He-Man or Skeletor or Tila. I mean, he's damn popular. And it's because he glows in the dark. You can't underestimate how cool this is. It has a surprise and delight feature that kids and adults just are drawn to, especially kids, because, well, kids love glowing things. When we did the Zodak figure in Masters of the Universe Classics that was originally, well, okay, you've got Zodak with a C there, and now Zodak with a K. Zodak with a K was reimagined in the 2000X series as more of a mythical defender as opposed to a cosmic warrior, but 
as I was talking about tooling amortization, he used mostly the same parts, or at least existing parts. The things that made him different was his skin color and a few things to boots and arms, but his tattoos. That was really what set him apart from Zodak with AC, as, and this would be Zodak with AK. Making them two different characters just meant we could sell more toys. What Terry Higuchi didn't tell me, <laughs> he was the designer, I was the brand manager, was that he made those tattoos with glow-in-the-dark paint. I didn't find this out until one time when I had him at home and I turned the lights out, and there he was glowing on my shelf. And I was like, Terry, why didn't you tell me this? And it's because he wanted to create that surprise and delight feature. And it really worked. Even fan sites were updating their reviews. All right, so talking about kids and surprise and delight, this is where the real market for glow-in-the-dark is. Yeah, you could use it for variants for adult collectors, but when you have a glow-in-the-dark product for children, it really takes the feature and maximizes the appeal. Well, why is this? I've mentioned in a few other videos how children, as you know, if you're parents out there, are scared of the dark. That's when, you know, the giant monsters under the bed or the cuddly monsters from Monsters, Inc. come out and do whatever it is they do at night. So having a glow-in-the-dark toy in your room, whether it's stars on your wall or a friendly face sitting on your nightstand, it can create a feeling of harmony, happiness, and safety. It's also why glow-in-the-dark features and parts are added to superheroes, because, again, now they're saving you from the dark, and it's a seen as a protection for children. That's why glow-in-the-dark works so well from a feature standpoint. It creates that emotional connection with kids. So how does glow-in-the-dark actually work? Well, things that glow-in-the-dark contain substances called phosphors. So phosphors come from the chemical agent phosphorus, which, you know, is located on everyone's favorite periodic table, unless, of course, you have knocked it out and replaced it with nitlicium, which, like I have. But if you're not me, you know phosphorus is number 15 on the table. And phosphors are chemicals that naturally exhibit luminescence. Luminescence, excuse me, meaning they glow. Now, specifically, phosphorus toys glow because they absorb light which energizes the atoms. And then once these atoms become energized, they emit light out, which is what creates the glowing sensation. It's not a chemical reaction as much as it is that these materials gain energy through visible light or other sources and become excited. And they are going to then emit tiny packets of light called photons, which make the object essentially glow in the dark. So, yeah, you're basically looking at photons being admitted from a toy. Hey, sounds like we're all living in Star Trek now, right? It's basically different wavelengths that are coming off of the toy. So, how is this added actually into the plastic? Well, there's several materials, like zinc sulfide is one of the big ones, as well as strontium aluminate, if I can say that correctly. Both of these are easily found chemicals that are perfectly safe, and they're essentially mixed in with the plastic, much as if you had a scented toy, like you wanted to mix in patchouli to make stink or smell. Now, zinc looks like this when it's in its natural form, but when chopped up into powder, it can look like this, and it will glow in the dark, because it is a phosphate, so or has phosphors in it. So, who invented glow in the dark? Well, Dr. Edwin Chandros was the one who invented the glow stick, and like things like microwaves or the Liger, great things like this, of course, came out of government contracts. Why a glow stick from a government contract? Submarines. Ah, didn't see that one coming, did you? Well, as everyone knows, the one thing you can say about great submarine captains is that they love raves. And looking for ways to have better raves inside their submarines led them to need to find ways to light up dark areas when there was no electricity. Hence, glow sticks work perfectly for this. And when Dr. Chandras invented the glow stick for this purpose, he had no idea that eventually it was going to become so popular, both for partygoers, children, and, well, anyone who wants to see in the dark or distract a T-Rex from charging. So, what does the future of glowing have? Well, it's pretty bright, no pun intended. There's a lot of new versions of glow-in-the-dark that are coming out, and one of the biggest ones from Japan by Dr. Yaksumoto Aoke. Gosh, I hope I pronounced that right. Well, he has created a new 
type of glow-in-the-dark that is brighter and lasts longer. And there's a lot of applications that are being looked at, such as using his new glow technology or glow paint for streets in order to light them up at night. So if you're going down a lonely country road or a busy country freeway, you'll be able to see. There's also looking at technology to grow plants that are photoluminescent or bioluminescent to replace light bulbs. So glow-in-the-dark has a lot of uses. Now, of course, for kids, it's never going to end because that emotional thrill of vanquishing the dark and having a bright friend or a field of stars above you as you go to sleep is very, very comforting. And that's why glow-in-the-dark remains so popular. And for all the brand managers out there who ever get a chance to work on a scare glow, remember he's supposed to glow all over, not just the head and the chest and the accessory. All over, guys. All over. I hope you enjoyed this video and a look at glow-in-the-dark past, future, and present. Present and future? Subscribe, ring the bell, help the algorithm. It helps YouTube know to share this video with more people. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the comment section.